Hello, I'm Linda Thompson, and as a Christian, I had the opportunity to travel to Israel and Jordan about eight months ago in February 2023. In light of the crisis going on now in Israel, I'd like to share with you what I learned about Israel, Judaism, and Islam. Israel is a coastal country located on the Mediterranean Sea in the Middle East. Geographically, it is about the size of New Jersey and about the same population density. It is at the same latitude as Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia. After World War I in 1916, France and Great Britain divided up the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire, which had controlled the Middle East for 400 years since 1517, had sided with Germany during World War I. Syria and Lebanon became a French protectorate. The United Kingdom took control of Iraq, Palestine, and Jordan. The Arab states of the Persian Gulf became de facto British protectorates. Control of the area was important because of the Suez Canal and wanting to prevent Russia from accessing the Mediterranean. In 1947, the United Kingdom gave up Palestine. The United Nations approved a plan to partition Palestine into a Jewish and an Arab state. For more than 2,000 years, Jews lived as scattered religious minorities. When on May 14, 1948, Israel was officially declared an independent, self-governing nation-state, it was cause for celebration for the Jews. This was the birth of the state as a political, sovereign, and independent entity. The United Nations established Israel, a Jewish democratic state, a socialist country. This historic and victorious event for the Jews was not seen, seen in the same light by the Arabs. The Arabs rejected the plan. The following day, May 15, 1948, five Arab nations, Egypt, Jordan, Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon invaded the area in what was known as the 1948 Arab-Israeli War, lasting through March of 1949. When a ceasefire agreement was reached in 1949, which Israelis call the War of Independence, Israel controlled the area that the UN had proposed for the Jewish state as well as almost 60% of the area proposed for the Arab state. The West Bank became part of Jordan and the Gaza Strip became Egyptian territory. For the past 75 years, there have been numerous wars, clashes, and acts of violence between the Arabs and the Jews. Today, there are nine million Israelis. Two million aren't Jewish, mostly Arab, and 150,000 Christians who are predominantly Greek Orthodox. At the time of World War II, 1,300 German Christians living in Israel were sent to Australia in exchange for German Jews. Following World War II, every Jew from around the world had the right to come to this country and claim their birthright. An immigrant is automatically entitled to citizenship by virtue of being Jewish. You are Jewish if your mother is Jewish. Converting to Judaism if your mother was not Jewish, however, is a multi-layered process. In 1967, a conflict erupted between Israel and the Arab states of Egypt, Syria, and Jordan over the rights 
of Israeli shipping to pass through the Suez Canal. Israel launched a preemptive airstrike, crippling the air forces of Egypt and its allies. Previously, Israeli spies had gone into Syria. They suggested to the locals that they plant trees over their bunkers to hide them. The Syrians thought that was a good idea and planted the trees. Thus, the Israeli military had no trouble spotting all the enemy bunkers identified by trees on the Golan Heights from across the Sea of Galilee. In six days, there were more than 20,000 Arab casualties and fewer than 1,000 for Israel. Israel had seized Syria's Golan Heights. The Jordanian annexed West Bank also referred to as Palestine, and it seized Egypt's Sinai Peninsula, as well as the Egyptian-occupied Gaza Strip. In 1973, Egypt launched the Yom Kippur War to retake the Sinai. Bitter fighting took place. As a result of the Israel-Egypt Peace Treaty, Israel withdrew from the Sinai in 1982, but retained the Gaza Strip, a 25-mile-long narrow enclave that borders the Mediterranean Sea, Israel, and Egypt. The Palestinian Authority is the governing body of the Palestinian autonomous regions of the West Bank and Gaza Strip, established in 1994 as part of the Oslo Accords, the peace agreement between Israel and the Palestine Liberation Organization. In 2007, Hamas, an Islamic terrorist militant group founded in 1987, seized control of Gaza from the Palestinian Authority. However, Israel has maintained control of Gaza's airspace and shoreline, even after withdrawing all of its troops and settlers from the territory in 2005. Since 2007, Gaza has been under an Israeli air, sea, and land blockade that restricts the movement of people and goods in and out of the country. Syria hoped to recapture the Golan Heights but was unsuccessful. The international community recognizes the Golan Heights to be official Syrian territory and widely rejects Israeli military occupation. In March 2019, President Trump, in a tweet, voiced his support of Israeli control over the Golan Heights, reversing decades of American policy. The West Bank is located on the West Bank of the River Jordan, bordered on the north, west, and south by Israel, and on the east by Jordan. The Arabs who live there are called Palestinians. Decades of violence and on and off talks between Israel and the Palestinians have left its final status unresolved, as both assert rights there. Israel doesn't recognize Palestine as a state, yet more than 135 UN member nations do. In 2018, President Trump relocated the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, which was met with Palestinian protest. In the West Bank, there are 11 provinces. Each one has an A, B, and C area. A area are only for Arabs. B is a mixed area and C is only for Israelis. Arab Palestinians cannot travel into Israel except with special permits on Ramadan, a Muslim holiday. If they want to travel by air, they cannot fly out of Tel Aviv. They must fly out of an airport in Jordan. 
Israelis cannot travel to the West Bank unless they live there. Israelis live in the West Bank because housing is less expensive there than in Jerusalem. For those who live in the West Bank and have permission to go into Jerusalem, there is a separate road and gate for them to take. The Christians, mostly Greek Orthodox, who live in the West Bank are allowed with a permit to travel to Jerusalem at Christmas. In 1993, Itzhak Rabin, Prime Minister of Israel, and Yasser Arafat of the Palestinian Liberation Army signed the Oslo Accord. In 1995, thousands of Israelis attended a peace rally in Tel Aviv to show support for Rabin and his attempt to make peace with the Palestinians. Rabin gave a speech insisting Israelis were ready for peace, urging them to overcome their fears, let go of the past, and finally forge an accord with their neighbors. Moments later, he was assassinated by a Jew who disagreed with Rabin's willingness to cede territory and allow the creation of a Palestinian authority with its own armed police force. Rabin's government and the prospect of a lasting peace between Palestinians and Israelis died with him. Many have suggested a two-state solution, but acknowledge that Israelis and Palestinians are unlikely to settle on borders. The Knesset is the unicameral legislature of Israel. There are 120 seats in the Knesset, as there are 12 tribes of Israel, and it takes 10 Jews to make a quorum. Therefore, 10 times 12 is 120. The Knesset passes all laws, elects the president and prime minister, although the prime minister is ceremoniously appointed by the president, approves the cabinet, and supervises the work of the government, among other things. The Knesset may dissolve itself and call for new elections. The prime minister may also dissolve the Knesset. Theodore Herzl is considered the father of Zionism. His first visit to Jerusalem coincided with that of Kaiser Wilhelm. When he went to check into the hotel in Jerusalem, Kaiser Wilhelm and his entourage were using all the rooms in the hotel, so Herzl slept on a pool table. The Zionist movement brought Jews from all over the world speaking different languages. To help unify the new country, Hebrew became the official language after 2,000 years. Currently, you cannot become a citizen of Israel unless you are Jewish. And once again, being Jewish means that your mother was Jewish. The Zionist movement brought Ashkenazi Jews from Germany and Poland in 1909. They brought, bought up land what was sold to them was mostly desert and swamp. They brought in eucalyptus trees as they thought it would soak up the water in the swamps. It didn't work. Much of the land was bought by Baron Rothschild. The initial Zionists still own their land. All other land is owned by the government. If an Israeli builds a house, they own the house but not the land. Arabs, however, have their own land. Much of Israel is desert and rainfall is not plentiful. 75% of the water for the country is taken from the Mediterranean, Mediterranean Sea and desalinated. 
85% of the water used for irrigation is treated gray water. Spain is the next closest country to accomplish that much treated gray water for irrigation. All the houses in the entire country must be made from Jerusalem limestone. All homes must have solar panels to heat their water. As you can see in these pictures, the water tanks and solar panels on the rooftops and the never-ending limestone buildings. Also, to bring people together in this melting pot, forced military service was created. Three years for men and two years for women, beginning at the age of 18. After their military service, they receive money for education or to start a business. Even on their days off, these young soldiers have to carry their weapons. Non-Jews do not have to do mandatory military service. The ultra-Orthodox Jews are exempt, which is not popular among the other 80% of non-Orthodox Jews in Israel. In the military, it becomes too difficult as the ultra-Orthodox won't serve with women, the food is kosher, but not ultra kosher, and they will not work on the Sabbath. Currently, 25% of first graders are from ultra Orthodox families. The ultra Orthodox still get government benefits. So the situation in Israel today is both political and religious. The first five books of the Bible are known by Jewish people as the Torah, which in English means the law. This man was writing the Torah on cow skin. It will take him about one year to create a Torah by hand and cost about $30,000. The Torah contains 613 commandments, 248 positive commandments or acts you should perform, and 365 negative commandments, things to abstain or refrain from doing. Today, there are 77 positive and 194 negative commandments, 26 of which apply only within the land of Israel. Pomegranate is a favorite Jewish fruit. It has, according to legend, 613 seeds, which corresponds to the 613 Jewish laws. When a Jewish man eats a pomegranate, they pray that they will do 613 good deeds. Shabbat is the Jews' holy day. It begins at sunset on Friday through sunset on Saturday. Jewish law forbids Jews from doing work that creates on Shabbat. A prohibition on Shabbat is the activating and deactivating electrical devices. Driving is prohibited because an engine is turned on. A Shabbat elevator works in a special mode operating automatically so that Jews don't have to push buttons or operate the switches. There are home appliances such as ovens, refrigerators, and dishwashers that are especially made to have a Shabbat mode which allows them to be used on the Sabbath. Ultra-Orthodox Jews cannot tear toilet paper on the Sabbath. It needs to be pre-torn before Shabbat or individual tissues can be used. Financial transactions are also forbidden on the Sabbath. The most well-known of the Jewish kosher laws is the prohibition of mixing meat and dairy. A fully kosher household would have two or three sets of dishes, separate dishwashers and sinks. The consumption of pig, camel, 
rabbit, or shellfish is prohibited. Meat must come from animals that are slaughtered in a painless, humane way. The mikvah is the ritual bath that women must do before marriage and each month after menstruation, before a woman can have relations with her husband. Men are supposed to do a ritual bath every week before the Sabbath. There are always seven steps down to the bath, symbolizing the seven days of creation. The first kibbutz was founded in 1909 in Palestine. Initially, the kibbutz was the most successful form of communism. Today, there are 250 kibbutz in Israel. Most are farming communities that teach self-reliance, collective action, and civic responsibility. After 1998, children could sleep at the home of their parents. Previously, they slept collectively all together. At the kibbutz, your stipend depends on how many children you have, not according to what job you have. During World War II, when the British were still in charge of Israel, many Holocaust survivors were trying to come to Israel. The British did not want them there. In Akko, the Jews would get the British soldiers very drunk and then help the refugees off the ships. They gave them pajamas and put them in bed in Jewish homes. When the British soldiers sobered up in the morning, and found the ship empty, they went to the Jewish homes to look. The refugees had been taught to respond to the soldiers. I am Jewish and I live here. They arrested some of the Jews that were helping the refugees and imprisoned them in Akko. A bakery was built nearby that provided bread to the prison. Inside the breads were guns and bullets which allowed for an uprising and successful escape. The Western Wall in Jerusalem, also known as the Wailing Wall, contains the remains of the Western Retaining Wall that surrounded the Temple Mount, the site of the first and second temples of Jerusalem. The wall now forms part of a larger wall that surrounds the Muslim Dome of the Rock. Seven layers are original and go back to the actual west wall of the old city. It is a place of pilgrimage and prayer sacred to the Jews. It has long been a custom to push slips of paper and wishes or prayers into the cracks in the walls. Temple Mount is a very holy spot to all three monotheistic religions. For Jews, it covers the holiest spot on earth, the foundation stone of Solomon's inner temple. David united the 12 Israelite tribes, conquered Jerusalem, and brought the Israelites' central artifact, the Ark of the Covenant that houses the Torah into the city. David's son, Solomon, built the first temple to house the Ark of the Covenant on what is called Temple Mount. Before the construction of the first temple, this area was known as Mount Moriah, where Abraham came to sacrifice his son Isaac. The Babylonians under Nebuchadnezzar attacked and conquered Israel. The first temple was destroyed and the Ark of the Covenant stolen in 587 BC, vanishing from history. The Jews were taken as captives to Babylon. Fifty years later, King Cyrus the Great conquers Babylon and frees the Jews. 50,000 Jews returned to the Promised Land and built the second temple in Jerusalem. In the seventh century, the Islams were in power and then built the Dome of the Rock 
atop Temple Mount to shelter the rock from which the Prophet Muhammad ascended to heaven. For many Christians, Temple Mount is near the start of the Via Dolorosa, along which Jesus carried the cross to the site of the crucifixion after Pilate's condemnation. The Dome of the Rock, completed in 691, is the world's oldest surviving work of Islamic architecture. Mohammed had a vision in Mecca and flew on a winged horse with the face of a man to this spot, Temple Mount in Jerusalem, where he received the five pillars of the Muslim faith. The five pillars of Islam are, one, the profession of faith. There is no God but God, and Muhammad is the messenger of God. Two, prayer. Muslims pray facing Mecca five times a day, at dawn, noon, mid-afternoon, sunset, and after dark. They must cleanse with water before praying. Three, alms, giving 2.5% to the poor. Four, fasting, that occurs during Ramadan. And five, pilgrimage or hajj to Mecca that Muslims are expected to make at least once during their lifetime. Muhammad then returned to Mecca Mecca is the most holy place for the Islam faith. Medina, the second, and the Dome of the Rock is the third. WAQF was created after the Six Day War so that Muslims would always have access to this spot that is so holy for them. The dome at first was wooden, then it was replaced with copper. Then King Hussein of Jordan sold one of his apartments in England so that he could cover the dome in gold. Mosques are usually built at the highest point on a hilltop where the water source is located. All mosques have minarets where the muezzin calls Muslims to prayer five times each day. There are two main sects within the Muslim faith. After Muhammad died in 632, there was disagreement as to who should be the leader of the faith. One faction, now called the Sunnis, believed that the leader should be chosen by consensus. The other faction, known as Shiites, maintained that only a descendant of the prophet could be the true heir. 85% of the Muslims in the world are Sunnis. The Shiites can be found mostly in Iran, Iraq, and Bahrain. All three monotheistic religions began in the desert. Therefore, water has always had an importance to them. In Judaism, it is the mikvah, the ritual bath. For Islams, they must wash their heads, hands, and feet before praying five times each day or before entering a mosque. For Christians, water is used in baptism. Another religion, the Baha'i Faith, came to Haifa in Israel in 1868. The Baha'i religion teaches the essential worth of all religions and the unity of all people. Baha'i regard the world's major religions as fundamentally unified in purpose, though diverging in social practices and interpretations. The Baha'i faith stresses the unity of all people, rejecting racism, sexism, and nationalism. At the heart of Baha'i 
is the goal of a unified world order that ensures the prosperity of all nations, races, creeds, and classes. The three central principles are unity of God, unity of religion, and unity of humanity. The Baha'i have a garden for meditation on the slopes of Mount Carmel in Haifa. In the midst of war, once again in Israel, perhaps it is the Baha'i that have it right. Unity of humanity. I found this sign in Israel, and I wish it were true. Here is a place whose atmosphere is peace, where political and religious jealousies can be forgotten and international unity be fostered and developed. Pray for peace.